wouldn't it be so awesome if you could have one technique that solves lots of problems? Well, today I'm going to share with you one technique that solves so many problems. So let's jump right in. And I am talking about glazing. What is glazing? And people often get glazes and washes confused because they're similar in some ways and very different in others. So a wash is where you take tea consistency paint, which is watercolor paint with a lot of water mixed in and you paint with it on virgin paper. That is a wash and it's often done for an underpainting. A glaze is a little different in that you paint it over areas that have already been painted. And what's the same is usually it's a very tea consistency, watery mix of paint. But the difference is you paint it over dried areas in your painting to either change the value or change the color of what you're painting over. First, let's talk about a few ways to be successful with glazes. So the first thing that you want to do to be successful with a glaze is to make sure that your painting is bone dry before you paint a glaze over your painting. All right, the next tip is use decent paper if you plan on using a lot of glazes. If you're going to use one, two, or three layers of glazes, uh, cheaper student grade paper usually will take that like my hippie crafter paper that I love so much I paint several glazes over that and it's been fun But then recently I was painting a hummingbird and I painted a glaze over that and the glaze just sunk in like I didn't even paint it almost and so I'll show you that footage in a little bit But if you use a lot of glazes and you're if you're too aggressive in your painting Then cheaper paper will break down and I would suggest using either hot press or cold press watercolor paper my favorite for beginners is cold press paper because it blends so much better, but you can use cold press or hot press, a good quality watercolor paper, and you'll be a lot more successful with your glazes. They'll look richer, they'll look more colorful, and you'll be able to get a larger range of values from light to dark on better watercolor paper. All right, my last tip about painting with glazes is you want to add quite a bit of water to your paint to get it really watery so it flows over whatever you are painting and it affects how the underlying layers look, but not too much. And you can still, you'll still be able to see the layers underneath. And that's the whole point of painting uh, with a glaze. So you wanna use really tea consistency paint when you're painting with glazes for the most part. And I made a whole video about painting with tea consistency paint. And I also made a whole video about milk consistency paint and a whole video about cream consistency paint. So be sure to check out those videos on my channel if you don't know the difference between the different consistencies of watercolor paints, you can mix. All right, and now a word from our sponsor. If you would like to learn from me more in depth, you can join my Patreon. But first, what I would suggest you do is actually watch my free beginner bunny tutorial. And you can watch that by going to this link here. You will have to join my website as a member, but it's free and I will not spam you. I might send you yummy little watercolor tip morsels here and there, but that's about it. But so you can join my website and watch beginner bunny and also i have another post here if you go to my patreon index you can see all the tutorials i have available but at the very beginning you will see a note to my beginners a note before you start um, before you join my patreon i would love it if you would read that so you kind of see where you're going to be going before you sign up because i don't want you to sign up and then hate it i want you to love it i want you to love learning watercolor and i want us to have a great time together. So don't join until you read that and you try Beginner Bunny and then join if you like me. <laughs> I hope you do, but it's okay if you don't. Not everyone can like all this. I mean, it's a lot. So anyway, all right, back to the tutorial. <laughs> all right, let's look at a very real world example of a painting someone posted. Christine Holden posted this very recently on my Facebook group. She requested feedback. So I don't give anybody feedback unless they ask but then I usually will. And by the way, if you post on my Facebook group and I don't comment, it's because I didn't see your post. I comment on every single post people make on my free Facebook group. So if you post something and I don't respond and you want a response, you can message me. I don't mind that at all. I'm amazed at how well she painted these dogs being nude painting. I mean, she did such a great job, but there are lots of things that she could strengthen with glazes with this painting. And so I popped her painting into Photoshop and I did a screen record of me painting digitally with a glaze, a very watery, see-through, transparent, grayed down purple glaze. And let's watch this footage and my explanation of what I did to make her painting a lot stronger using glazes. Roll them. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. All right, so I am using what we call a glaze in watercolor. You can see I'm using a gray 
purple and notice how I paint directly over the dog and the background. This is if the paper was perfectly dry. This is what we call a glaze and this would be tea consistency, Windsor Violet with maybe a little bit of lamp black mixed in, very watery, very drippy paint that glazes right over the painting. And because watercolor is transparent, you can see the layers still underneath. And so I'm adding purple, gray purple, which is the complement of yellow. We want that yellow to really sing. So to make colors sing, you wanna use colors in the painting that are complementary. Purple is across the color wheel from yellow. And I also grayed it down and I painted it over both the dogs in the shadow and the background. And so that really helped make this look more three-dimensional. All right, another way you can use glazes is to calm down a chaotic background. A, a, chaotic <laughs> a chaotic background can be created from using too bright colors or too many values that are a similar value to your subject. I painted this hummingbird painting recently, and this is the painting I was talking about in the beginning where I was using cheap hippie crafter paper, and this is the first time this paper has given me any problem. I love this hippie crafter paper. There's a link in my description below, along with all my other favorite supplies. Uh, so be sure to check out links to free tutorials and supplies and all kinds of great resources in my description. But in this painting, I was painting on Hippie Crafter and I'd painted several glazes already to build up the values and everything. And then I did this pretty thick, almost milk consistency black over the entire background because I could see the hummingbird, this bright little neon hummingbird was getting lost in my very bright neon, similar value to medium values in the background and medium values in um, my subject, which is like beginner mistake 101. And I still make these mistakes by the way. So I hated the painting. So I was like, well, I don't care if I mess it up. I'm gonna paint black over the entire background. And it came out so much better than I thought it would, mostly because the hippie crafter, the hippie crafter, <laughs> that's not a word. That is not what they're called. They're not hippie crafter. They're hippie crafter. And I like their paper, even though on this per per particular, <laughs> I'm just having a problem. This is the second time I've recorded this because the first time I recorded, I didn't have my mic on. So I'm a little flap happy, <laughs> but anyway. So I painted black milk consistency all over the background thinking this is just gonna kill it, but I'm gonna go bold, go bold or go home since I hate this painting anyway. And I did it and it sunk into the paper as if it had been a tea consistency mix and it calmed down the background. And now look at the before and the after. Before you can't see the hummingbird because he blends into, it's like camouflage for hummingbirds is to paint a neon background that's busy, that's the same value as the foreground hummingbird. Just don't do that. What was I thinking? But anyway, and here's the after. And look how much you can see the hummingbird now. I, I like this painting so much better, but now it still looks like a cutout. And by the way, I'm going to talk about how to fix the cutout look in a minute. And it's a really powerful way to do it. So I might have to do that next with another glaze over this hummingbird to make him not look like a cutout now. All right, so that segues nicely into my next common problem that uh, beginners have, which Christine had the cutout look, and we talked a little bit about that, but let me show you another example that's so great that people responded really well in my shorts. I made a short about this dog, and if you haven't watched my shorts, they're full of yummy little watercolor tips that you really will enjoy. They will not waste your time. Okay, so let's look at this painting of this dark dog on a white background. I used a glaze on the shadow side of the dog, that's using what the windmill principle teaches us to have um, dark on dark edges. So I created a dark on dark edge by painting a glaze of blue over the shadow side of the dog and the background all at the same time. So let's take a look. Now it doesn't have to be blue, but in this painting I used blue and I painted over the right side of the dog, which in the reference photo is already in shadow. So this accomplished two goals. One, it helped tell the story of the light and how the light is hitting the dog. And two, it helped make my dog look like less of a cutout and more integrated into the painting. All right, like I was saying before, uh, another way to use glazes is to calm down chaos in your painting where it makes the main subject get lost. And I totally did this with my Diana painting. And the, the background of Diana, this painting right here in fact, uh, it got really chaotic because there's a lot of values and a lot of 
things in the background and it was just really chaotic. So I actually did a live video on my channel. You can go watch that from start to finish in real time of me painting a glaze over the entire background. And I chose cerulean blue, which is an earth pigment. And so that means it's a grayer blue. It's not a screaming blue that's gonna call attention to itself. So a lot of times I use grayer colors too in the background and cooler colors push areas back. So I used a glaze to one, calm down the chaos, two, cool down the background and push it back in space so that my warm subject popped forward even more. And that made the background of Diana all hang together better as one supportive element to really make Diana shine. All right, another really powerful way to use glazes is to use lots and lots of glazes to build up really rich color and or value. A perfect example where I used this approach to glazing is in the painting I did for uh, Christmas Kitty Lit, where the cat was playing with Christmas lights. And I knew that the lights had to be super light in value and the surrounding areas had to have soft, glowing, but super dark areas to support the lights to make it look like a glowing illusion. And so I did that with many, many layers of glazes. Each layer of successive glaze got smaller and smaller, covered a smaller and darker area as you move away from the lights. Flurkin, you wanna come say hi to everybody? Will you sit with me like Sadie used to? <laughs> no, hard no, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, optical mixing. All right, this, my next tip is about optical mixing. What is optical mixing? Optical mixing is when you use glazes over each other to affect colors and to build up um, changes in color. It's just like painting with saran wrap. Say you take a piece of yellow saran wrap, then you put blue saran wrap on top of that, you get a green looking effect. Watercolor, because it's transparent, does the same thing. And you can build really rich, beautiful color using glazing. Whereas if you just used one wash of thick, like for example, if you use just one wash of thick red paint, it would not look nearly as red and vibrant as if you use a kind of medium thin underpainting of yellow. And then over that put about milk consistency red, your red will look so much more glowing and alive because you use those colors in conjunction with each other using optical mixing and glazing techniques to make your colors really sing a lot more, a lot more powerfully because you use glazing. So let me show you how I did this in a painting where I was painting um, Estella. Her face was a little red. And also I noticed in the reference photo, the whole back side of her and her face had these yellow undertones. So I knew I would need to tie all that together. And if you use glazes of one color over a large area, it also ties that whole area together. So. Let's watch some footage of me painting her entire face with a glaze of yellow and then I brought it on down onto virgin white paper too because I knew I wanted that yellow to travel throughout the painting to kind of tie the whole painting together with that nice, beautiful, warm, glowing yumminess. All right, I wanna give you a special treat and this is a, this next clip is an artist that is not me, and I asked her for permission to use her short that I found on TikTok, and I found this artist originally through my splash, uh, through my splash books. Her name is Joanna Barnum, and she's been in Splash. She's amazing. She has a TikTok. I think she has a Patreon too. You can learn from her. Uh, she does a lot of fantasy painting, and anyway, so let's watch her use a glaze to transform her painting to make it even more dramatic than it already was. Thank you so much for joining me today. Go check out my description for lots of watercolor goodies. Come join my free Facebook group. 
please like this video if you enjoyed it and there's some bloopers coming because I messed up a lot in this video. And so watch that if you really must, but that's why I put it at the end, you know, so you don't have to watch me being stupid. And I hope you join me next week. I try really hard every, every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern, I go live with my newest video premiere. So I will most likely be there next Saturday. This summer is gonna get crazy, but I'm gonna try so hard to be there for you guys. So I will see you there. 8 a.m. sharp, Eastern time, every Saturday. Come live chat with me at my video premiere, whatever I'm premiering next Saturday. And I will see you then, I hope. And I love to chat with you guys. So until then, go watercolor your world. Bye, everybody. Can you change the painting? Mm, I'm just like, oh, no, I'm so tired now. <laughs> so, read my... <laughs> so today, I'm gonna give you a powerful tool <laughs> so today I'm going to give you a powerful tool